Interior Hospital, Knight. James Clyde, a tall, strapping, handsome black man, mid to late thirties, sits at the bedside of Desmond Clyde, a frail, sickly-looking black man, early to mid-seventies. I'm so sorry, Sonny. I never should have said those things about you. I lied to the police about you so many times. Only now do I see how much I hurt you. And I want you to know how sorry I am. And if possible, I hope you can forgive me. James places his hand on Desmond's. Fuck no. You misunderstand. I didn't come here to forgive you. I came to make sure you were dying. Now I will finally have the justice I have waited for for more than 20 years. I hope the demons have their way with you. I hope you suffer immensely. And I hope you never forget me for all eternity. Now die, you spineless, worthless, weasel-ass bitch. James stands and looks up at the ceiling. Thank you, God. James walks out of the room. Cut to Interior Duncan University, Albro Hall, the next morning. James stands before a full lecture hall. Thus, making parents essentially murderers. There are waves of murmurs throughout the hall. Can any of you give me one good reason that isn't motivated by self-interest to deliberately conceive and bring a child into this world? Why condemn people who want nothing, need nothing to death? Because that is what is being done. James smirks as he stares down the class. Your assignment. If you only had 192 hours left before the end of the world, what would you do? I want a 15-page chronicle of everything. See you on Monday. Cut to Interior, the Menagerie, later that night. James strolls through a high-end strip club filled with topless waitresses and predominantly male clientele. Hey, James. Hit me up for a dance later. Hey, boss. You need something? Let me know. Cut to Interior, the Menagerie, Dania's office, continuous. James walks in to find Dania Quinn, a beautiful, voluptuous woman, early to mid-thirties, sitting at her desk, reading. Clans of the Highlands? Aren't you Irish? And half Scottish. Aren't they basically the same thing? Dania glares at James. What do you want, James? The world is ending. Dania sighs. Interior, Ira's Bar, Night. A large sports bar, almost filled to capacity. James and Dania sit at a table, watching a group of men. Bachelor parties are stupid. Marriage is stupid. So what's wrong with the bride-to-be? She's already not very pleasing to the eye. And she's a cunt, which makes her hideous. What business of this is yours? It is absolutely none of my business. But he's actually a very nice guy. Saved my life and doesn't even know it. And I believe he deserves better. That's where you come in. Cut to Interior Beckwith Estate, bedroom, a few days later, morning. Ada Cohen, a homely, heavy-set woman, mid-thirties, walks into a wedding gown covered in red paint hanging, alone, on a rack. What the fuck? Ada notices dozens of intimate photographs of Austin and Danya, whose face is never seen, posted all over the walls. Ada's cell phone rings. She answers. Hello? Did you get my present? Who is this? If you have to ask, you'll never know. The sound of a motorcycle engine can be heard. Ada rushes to the window. Cut to exterior Beckwith Estate, continuous. A beautiful, plush estate containing several aesthetically pleasing houses, with a grand Victorian mansion as the centerpiece. James rides a motorcycle away down a long driveway, petticoat tails flapping almost heroically behind him. Cut to exterior parking lot later that afternoon. James looks up at the sky as it and the clouds turn dark. Why is it the same old story with you? Brian Cipriello, a thin, gangly, rugged man, mid-thirties, slow walks over to James. You came. Well, it's not every day someone like me gets a call from the great Dr. James Clyde. Well, in this moment, I am more grateful than anything. Grateful? For what? Back in high school. I saw us as complete opposites. Well, I mean... uh... I meant on the inside. Graduation day. I thought stopping you from blowing up our entire class made me a hero and you a villain. Well, you were right. I was out of my mind with rage and angst and hormones and shit. 
I would have regretted that for the rest of my life. And you didn't even turn me in. You just let me go about my day. My life. You are a hero. Well, now the world is ending, and all I can feel is rage and angst and hormones and shit. And you decided to call me. <laughs> I'm touched. I wanted to ask you if you were happy. Why? Because I thought of you today, and I started to question if I had done the right thing that day. You mean saving hundreds of innocent lives? No. I mean not taking the guilty one. James draws a handgun and shoots Brian in head, dead. James calmly walks away. James sits on the ground and checks his watch. Now I'm good. Cut to black.